So I'm going to dive right in. Um, so Arlen is the founder of Backstage Capital. Could you share a little bit with us about what is Backstage Capital? Yes, yeah, so we are a boutique venture capital fund, so we make investments, mm -hmm. and we invest in the underestimated. In our view, that is women, people of color, and LGBT founders. So we make investments into tech companies. Awesome. So talk me through a little bit. You have founded this fund. It's incredible. It's very important. What was that one moment in your life or that one scenario that you happened upon that you said, you know what, this is what I'm going to go do? Because you were a tour manager before, yeah, right? Yeah, working so in very yeah, different. different parts of the touring world. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't one moment. It was a few moments, kind of okay. dots that kind of made a line. And it was just seeing, um, mostly seeing uh, the underrepresented kind of get overlooked mm -hmm. and and uh, ignored for too long and just really seeing that over and over again these great companies that people were just not interested in talking to when I would send them deals and then um, actually something I don't talk about very often is that there was a deal that had a uh, traditional founder whatever that means yeah. but I actually connected them to a, a major fund and the fund passed and then uh, two months later, I saw that that fund actually um, led their big, a big round for them. And I thought, well, I'm, I must be good at this if I'm putting that together. And I didn't get the credit for it, but I must be good at it. And I don't want to be on the sidelines anymore. You know, just like founders were being under, um, overlooked, I was being overlooked as an investor. Well, that sucks. It does. <laughs> but it, it created this. So I, I, have yeah. to be, I have to be happy about it. OK, awesome. So you work with some awesome startups, some awesome yeah. founders now yeah. who have some real grit and determination. Yes. Could you give us a little bit of a flavor about what are some of those businesses? Who are some of those founders? Yeah. What are they up to? Well, we've invested across two different, so I've invested across two different funds, mainly at Backstage Capital, and in this year, an, uh, an additional 10 or so companies in, a, in my own fund. And so it's 130 companies in four years. So it's a lot to pull from. So we invest agnostically, which means that we can look at everything, really, as long as the founders uh, are underrepresented and underestimated. And I, you know, since there's 130, you can pull maybe one recent one is called Mommy, and they are uh, uh, they kind of they link the the parents and the the care providers. Uh, during birth and then after birth so that they can kind of track how they're doing right. and in some cases it saved lives because um, while you're you know you're you're not really given a big blueprint when you leave the hospital after you have a child no matter how many you've had mm -hmm. you kind of have your team and that's great and you have these follow-up um, calls but you don't necessarily have someone tracking you day by day minute by minute and so they have saved lives by noticing someone who had really severe postpartum okay. depression and catching them uh, before they even knew it and right. things like that. So mommy and it was, I actually led that deal and Serena Williams and Mark Cuban are in the deal with us as well. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. We had Alexis Sohanian here with yeah, us yesterday. Exactly, and he yeah. was talking about the importance of paid parental leave. Yes. So it's yes. definitely a hot topic right yeah. now and it should be. That's so exciting. Where can we buy it? Well, you go to Mommy, M-A-H-M-E-E, -E, okay. and you can sign up. And you can e either you're a parent that's you know going to have a child or newly uh, had a child, or you can be a provider. Um, you can be in the health industry and, and take a look at it, too. Awesome. Yeah. So switching gears a little bit. So we talked about some of your founders have crazy resilience and grit, and you're obviously helping them. You yourself were, my understanding is you were living in Texas. Yes. And you bought a one-way ticket to San Francisco, and yeah. you're like, that's it. I'm just going to make this happen. Yeah. And you were pretty much sleeping, were in the airport for a little bit, mm -hmm. I read. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Like, what was your plan B if this didn't work out? Plan B. Um, <laughs> so I actually have never been asked that question before about this particular thing. Plan B. I used to say that plan B was like, fail, like planning for failure. And I didn't really like it. I think I saw that on Arsenio once. I don't know if anybody in this place knows who's Arsenio. But I think I, I so I kind of had it in my mind. Uh, my plan B really was that, my plan was I was going to give this everything I had. Mm -hmm. And I was not going to stop unless I was doing harm. You know, I, I think you, you, should, you, you should take no's and use them as fuel. 
You don't take no's over and over from the same person because that's abuse. You don't say, okay. I'm going to ask you over and over again because okay. they've told you what they want. But you take their no, you go to the next, and you go to the next, and you go to the next. And I knew that I would do that. Um, I, I, to be quite honest with you, I can't remember a time where I thought, I'm not, this isn't going to happen. My thing was more like, this could take 10 years. This could take 20 years. But I'm going to do it. Right. So I did some research for this interview. And everything I read about you as part of that story was that resilience, that like, hey, the thing that I love so much about Arlen is that you can see that she's just not going to give up. Mm. I believe her. Right. I believe in her. That's incredible. That's very sweet. Thank you. It was awesome. And um, but my question to you is, like, who inspires you? Like, who do you admire? Mm -hmm. Like, who do you look up to to get those moments? Mother first. My mother, Erlene Sims, because um, she just has that. She just has that resilience. I mean, I've seen it over 70 years. I've seen, you know, half of that of her 70 years, and just uh, a wonderful example. And then, like, you know, there's people, there are people, like, um, like growing up and then into my 20s and 30s, Richard Branson was a big one because uh, the judge told him he was either going to go to prison or be a millionaire, you know, and, and Two very because, distinct because he could see that, like, the judge could see that, and yeah. so um, he, he just has a really interesting life, and I, 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 I kind of have a kinship to it. And then people like Janet Jackson, uh, people like Oprah. Yeah. Like, oh, I just listened to her, the Making of Oprah podcast just oh, yesterday. that's incredible. Yeah. You should all check Making that out. Making Oprah. Making yeah. Oprah it's podcast really from 2016. And I was just like, how you, I mean, just fell in love all yeah. over again because she's just, she's a movement. She's just completely force of nature. And it's just people who, um, just against all odds, right. kind of, you know, never, nevertheless, they persist. Yes. That sort of thing. That to me, that's really inspiring. And because it doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be that you are famous or you you're rich from it. Right. Like I um, find that a lot of inspiration from people who just do their jobs really well. Like honestly, like there was, um, I went into it like a CVS mm -hmm. and or Walgreens, one of the one of those. Yeah. And I there is a woman there who just knew where everything was from like top to bottom in that store. And I was just like, can I can I study with you? Because I just love that you care so much and that you study so much and that you know you know your purpose so much. It was just really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So Silicon Valley is very synonymous with investing, especially in tech. Mm -hmm. um, startups, funds. Yes. You're based in LA, correct? Yes. So why build a fund, an investment firm, a startup outside of Silicon Valley? I mean, I, I never was part of that whole thing. I didn't, I didn't have any reverence for it. I didn't think it was the promised land. It was right. a great place uh, for finding talent, yes. But I had been to other cities in the country and I knew that talent existed outside of Silicon Valley. Right. And I wasn't necessarily trying to, like to me, the biggest goal wasn't let me be the next and you know, insert older white man investor here. Like that, that's not exciting to me. Sure. So I wasn't like I have to be there and I have to emulate what they're doing and I have to be in that crowd. And I really don't like networking. Like um, I like to, I like to, to meet people and talk pe to people and understand people, but I don't like small talk. Right. And so, um, and I and, and probably surprising to most people, but I am very introverted. So the whole thing of like going and playing this game and trying to be cool and I just it didn't appeal to me. So I thought I'd go to some place that was more grounded, Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So networking, yeah, it's a bit uncomfortable. We had a bit about it on stage earlier oh, really? this week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's why everyone left. Yeah. So why do you come to events like this? You know, you're here. We're very thankful you're here. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. And you know, you were on the cover of an incredible magazine. You did an amazing interview with Emily Chang recently. Yeah. Like you're very vocal on Twitter, for example. That's how we got yes. connected, which yes. was incredible. Yes. So talk to me about why that's important for you to be out there, especially if you are like more introverted potentially, and not yeah. that those two. Things I mean, it's are. about everything that I do that I think about is about impact. Right. And so um, there's impact one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. and then there's impact 
where you know you can kind of reach more people. And so like a really well done event, you know, can, can get out to a lot of people. And also I feel like um, there are a lot of things that I didn't know up until very recently and still plenty that I don't know, but there are a lot of things I didn't know that would have helped me save time. And so if I can kind of uh, pass that on to somebody else in this kind of environment, I love that too. So it's all about like impact and, and purpose. Cool, I love how focused that is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all day. <laughs> so inevitably when you're doing something a little bit different or just that's shaken it up that hasn't been done before, especially as women, we get a lot of pushback sometimes. Like, can you talk to me about how you handle that or how you think about it? I Do tweet, you? I tweet you. <laughs> Good. I call people out. <laughs> I make up, you know, little names for them. Um, so you mean like when people are just being jerks because you are something, because you're a woman? Because, because you're you are, different, because you're trying to push on oh, any type of man. stereotype? I mean, I wish better for them, you know? I, I, feel, I feel pretty um, bad for that part of themselves that has to kind of put that on other people. I wonder what, and that, comes, that stems from being in like first grade, I used to sit on the playground and just watch everybody and wonder how they were feeling mm -hmm. and wonder what they were thinking. Right. Like, that's why I got this bowler's body because uh, I never was athletic, but I was always thinking and uh, focused there. So I, I think about the, like, why why are they doing that? But, you know, beyond that, um, especially if it's a repeat offender, mm -hmm. I, uh, I try to think about how many, I mean, honestly, I think about how many people who don't, how many people don't have the, the privilege that I have of having a voice right. or being as, um, like as bold as I can be, because some people think it and feel it and they feel that, but they can't say it out loud. Right. Or if they did say it out loud, not, not a lot of people would get to hear it. Right. So I think about that and I'm like, you know what? If people can handle this in the shadows, I can certainly handle it with a bunch of people having my back too. Right. And it's their bad. It's like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the trolls when they, when they respond to me on Twitter and I'll just, I'll read, I'll read it and I'm like, oh, that's your bad. Like that's your bad that you yeah. said that because that's not me, I, you know. Right. Like that's, don't internalize it. It's not. Me. It's yeah. they're not talking about. I mean, I do. You know that Whitney gif that she's like looking around. Like that's me. <laughs> all I'm like, who are you talking to? You're not talking to me. <laughs> I love that. That is not me. Because and it's the same thing. I, honestly, when someone um, heaps a lot of praise on me, mm -hmm. I I can I can step outside of that and say they're 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 saying that about some things that I've done and that's really awesome. But that is. I'm not going to take that on either. So I don't take on a lot of praise and I don't take on a lot of negativity. I try Amazing. to stay as uh, centered as possible. Amazing. So we talked a little bit this morning about not necessarily the cliche term of work-life balance, but give us a little bit of insight. What do you like to do outside of Backstage Capital? Oh. What do you do to sort of keep you, yourself inspired? Yeah, well, very recently I started um, getting back into photography. Nice. And um, I don't know who your sponsors are, but iPhone, if you have one, if you don't have one, get one. If you have one, go to that portrait mode and start playing around, because I have some <laughs> beautiful photos that I've blown up and they're just gorgeous. And that, like photography inspires me so much because you're kind of having a conversation with the person without speaking. Okay. And it kind of, uh, it's just another like layer to what I, what I enjoy about life in general. So that's a lot of fun. There's very low, low pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, you take a bad picture, you don't show it to anybody. You just, <laughs> that didn't happen, it's all good. So I like that because there's a lot of high stakes in the world that I'm in every day and um, high expectations and all sorts of things and 130 companies and all sorts of things happening. But a photograph, that's you. That's something awesome. that is yours. I also um, really like, I mean, I love General Hospital and I've loved it for <laughs> decades and I'll watch that. I, I still watch every episode, so I'll continue to watch that. That's also amazing. I also have a podcast. The podcast helps me a lot because it's on a, I'm on a journey. Yep. It's called Your First Million and I'm, I'm on a journey in this podcast. And so that's like, again, low, like, low stakes. Love it. So you're gonna be heading up to the ballroom here at Inbound pretty soon. What do you hope to leave the Inbound audience with today? Um, I hope that um, if anyone is in that audience who feels like, before I speak, feels like they're, they're, they're not supposed to be in the room or they're not allowed or this room or another room, or they feel like they can't start something or 
they're holding on to that, I hope that they feel like empowered by themselves to do it. Me too. Yeah. yeah. So last question. Okay. We ask everyone this on the inbound studio. Okay. What does inbound mean to you? What does inbound mean? Yes. Wow. That's tough. Okay. In the word or the construct? Open to your interpretation. Okay, what does inbound mean? It means um, that you have the attention of people. Awesome. And yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure everybody here would like to say thank you as yeah. well. Thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the ballroom in just a little bit. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks.